Welcome to Windows 10 Crash Course. This video can be used as a learning material. It can also be used as a refresher for IT professionals. If you appreciate this information, please share it with friends and family. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. How to change password in Windows 10. On your left hand side, right next to the start button, click inside the search box and type in manage account. The first thing that should come up on top of your search should be manage your account system settings. Go ahead and select that or simply hit enter on your keyboard. Once we are at this window, we can see the name of our account and which type it is. On your left hand side, select sign in options. If you scroll down a little bit, you will see a menu called password and a box named change. Go ahead and select that button. Click change. Here we need to type in our current password. Go ahead and select next on the bottom. And this window is where we change our password. I would suggest using combination of letters and numbers. Go ahead and type in your new password once. In the below box, type in the same password again. And in the third and final box, you can type in hint for your password. After you're finished, select next. In my case, I'm going to cancel out because I don't want to change my password at the moment. How to add a new login account in Windows 10? This is usually done when you share your computer with another person. Right next to your Start button on the left-hand side, click inside the search box and type in Add Account. As a search result on top, first thing should be Add, Edit, or Remove Other People system settings. Go ahead and select that with your mouse or simply hit enter on your keyboard. If you'd like to add another person, scroll down a little bit and select add someone else to this PC under other people tab. Go ahead and click that. In the next window, you have two options. You can use your Microsoft email as a login, whether it's from Outlook.com, MSN.com, or anything else that might be related as listed here. However, I like to create personal local accounts which does not require internet connection to work. Underneath the email box, there's an option that says 
I don't have this person's sign-in information sort of towards the bottom here. Go ahead and select that. Here will give you an option to create a Microsoft account. Again, this requires internet connection to work properly. However, as stated previously, I like to create local user accounts. As you can see on the bottom here, it gives you an option to select add a user without a Microsoft account. Go ahead and select that. Otherwise, fill out this information. Here, you will give it an option to create a username for this person's account. Let's say this person's name is Larry. Type in Larry in the first box. In the second box, type in the password of your choosing. Make sure, well, I should say it's recommended to use a combination of letters and numbers. Once you type in your password twice, you can type in the hint for your password. For example, hint. Once you fill this out, go ahead and click next. And there you have it. Once you log out of this computer by selecting the search box on the left side, select the little person icon. And then you select sign out. Now you can select Larry as an option and then Larry can use his password to log in. How to change the screensaver in Windows 10. On your left hand side, right next to the start button, click inside the search box and type in themes. The top result should be themes and related settings. Go ahead and select that or simply hit enter on your keyboard. Once you're there, on your left hand side, about halfway down, look for an option that says lock screen. Go ahead and select lock screen on the left side. In this window, on the right hand side, we need to scroll down until we come across an option that is called Screensaver Settings. Go ahead and select Screensaver Settings. This brings you to a familiar pop-up from previous versions of Windows and then here you can change your settings accordingly. Personally I prefer a blank screensaver and five minute wait time. How to change your account name in Windows 10 also known as your login name. On your left hand side, right next to the start button, click inside the search box and type in control panel. The top result in your search should be control panel desktop app. Go ahead and select that or simply hit enter on your keyboard. 
On your right hand side, you should see a top option called user accounts. Go ahead and select user accounts. Similarly to the previous window, we have another option in the top middle here called user accounts once more. As previously, we need to select user accounts. Select user accounts. Here, you will have an option in the middle called change your account name. For this to work, you need to have administrator privileges, as you may notice here on the right hand side for my current login account. If you do have administrator privileges, go ahead and select change your account option. Here we can type in new account name. Once you're happy and satisfied with a new name, go ahead and select change name box on your right hand side. Since I'm not going to change my name, I'm going to click cancel. How to create a restore point and enable system protection in Windows 10. Next to your start bar, in the search box, type in Restore. First thing that comes up on the very top will be Create a Restore Point application. Go ahead and select that or simply hit Enter on your keyboard. First we need to enable system protection in order to create a Restore Point. Select the Configure box. Here we need to select Turn on System Protection. Underneath where it says Disk Space Usage, go ahead and allocate the amount of space you want to use for your System Restore and Backup. Once you're satisfied, go ahead and click Apply and OK. Now we can create a restore point. Go ahead and click the Create button. Name it whatever you like. Select Create. After a few seconds, your first restore point will be created. After which, if your computer crashes, or you lose some data, you will have a backup of your file system. Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kubo, and today I'm going to talk about one of the most overlooked and awesome features of Google Chrome that a lot of people may not be aware of, right? And what I'm talking about is specifically being able to create personal desktop icons for websites that you normally visit. So um, while I'm downloading Google Chrome here, actually let me get it going and installing here real quick. And then once we get to the desktop, I'll show you exactly what I mean and how awesome this feature is. Uh, there was a, just a pop-up for uh, Chrome asking me whether I want to install it. See all these icons that I have, for example, for Audacity, Control Panel, Firefox, OpenOffice, and Skype. Well, guess what? Um, you can create these same type of icons for each website that you use. For example, let's say you go to your favorite email uh, provider, let's say you go to Gmail, you can create that specific shortcut to that Gmail account without you having to open up your browser each time, you know, go to, you know, go to your bookmark or even type it in Google and clicking Gmail and this and that. You can create an icon that would simply state here, it would call, it would just say Gmail, right? So that's really awesome and handy because you can have a list of different icons on your desktop for all the things that you use the most while you're browsing the internet. And of course, I find that very useful because 
I have so many things that I access on a daily basis, whether it's multiple email providers, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, whether it's, of course, my YouTube channel, whether it's uh, anything else that I access, which are so many things that at this point I can't even uh, remember entirely. And the reason I didn't have Chrome installed on this computer is because this is a laptop that I mainly use on the go and it's not very powerful to be honest and Google Chrome tends to, uh, tends to be uh, resource intensive. So for this demonstration I will go ahead and obviously well you can see that I'm installing it right now just so, I, just so I can demonstrate this to you but that's the only reason I don't have Google Chrome already installed but either way this is a good way to kind of see Google Chrome installation as a a bonus uh, feature of this video I suppose right it's almost done here and once it's done we'll go ahead and go and, and visit Facebook first and maybe a couple other ones and then we'll create these awesome awesome desktop icons that will make this easy again especially if you're logging into random websites that you need to access whether it's some kind of a you know like I said email whether it's a you know some kind of a business account uh, you know uh, PayPal or whatever you can create these shortcuts on your desktop that will take you there instantly of course you have to have cookies enabled in order to have automatic sign-in into your accounts otherwise you will have to log in into each one of them but this is something you can certainly set up and oh man it makes your life so much easier especially if you're visiting a lot of a lot of uh, different stuff it's almost done here and uh, you can see how my computer is this laptop I should say and it's not incredibly fast and uh, okay well we got it installed so let me just go visit uh, uh, well I was gonna type in Facebook Facebook dot com and once we get there I will create this awesome icon that we need okay so here we are this is the uh, facebook.com obviously uh, on the right hand side towards the towards the the top of your browser there are these three dots sort of like a column dots right next to your little star for bookmark we're going to ahead and just click these three dots then we're going to go to more tools and then we're going to select add to desktop okay and then you can select that this is another feature that I really like you can select it so it opens up as a window so you will have a separate session of this if you will and it's kind of neat because you won't have anything else around here once you open it so okay I'm gonna go ahead and close it here and here's your Facebook icon right so once I double click it, it's gonna open it up as its own window which is uh, which is really really awesome I really like this Oh boy, it's so slow. <laughs> now you can see, now you, this, this just kind of goes, goes to show. Uh, but see, if you already logged in and you have cookies enabled, this and that, this, you, you will be directly logged into Facebook at this point. So next time you can just click this icon and it will take you to Facebook directly. Let's try something else. Let's try a, an email provider. Okay, come on now. <laughs> All right, let's go to Yahoo since I had it typed in earlier. Yahoo. And uh, here we go. I'm going to click Mail. And I'm going to do the same thing. The three dots on the right-hand side. Go all the way down to More Tools. And then select Add to Desktop. Okay. See, now we have our Yahoo login. Now let's do that with... Google Gmail let's do Gmail okay go to three dots more tools at the desktop and now let's go to YouTube we when we go when we go to the YouTube we can do the same thing click on the three dots go to more tools and select add to desktop once we move this here, we double click YouTube, 
and it will take us to our YouTube. But then again, I, I mean, I do realize this is, this is essentially creating shortcuts, which you can certainly do by right clicking on your desktop, select new, create shortcut, you know, type in HTTP or S, you know, whatever's more convenient for you, youtube.com, select next, call it YouTube, as you can see, there's just more work and it will just give you a shortcut called YouTube, you know, and then, you know, you, you, you get into this thing where it just thinks it's, it's a regular internet shortcut while with these type of icons, you can literally specify for it to go directly to where you need it, wherever you logged in, where you left off. I find this incredibly useful and I hope you guys do too. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you like my videos, please subscribe. I will have more videos in the future. And thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye. How to disable Cortana in Windows 10? If you're like me, you'd prefer this feature disabled. On your left-hand side, select the Start button. Select inside the search box. On the left hand side, you will see settings button. It will look like a cog. Go ahead and select it. Here, the first option will let us toggle Cortana on and off. Right now, she's turned on. If you select it, it will turn her off. While you're at it, you can go ahead and disable other features like use Cortana even when my device is locked. Taskbar tidbits. Scroll down. My device history. You can disable that. If you'd like to disable user controls in Windows 10, you can certainly do so, and I will show you how. Keep in mind that little pop-up you get every time you try and install a program, or whenever a program tries to make changes on your computer, serves as a safety feature. But I will show you how to turn it off. On your left-hand side, next to the Start button, click inside the search box and type in user account. First thing that comes up on top will be called change user account control settings. Go ahead and select that or press enter. In this window, we can see the current level that it's set to. Currently, it notifies me only when apps try to make changes to my computer as default. If you'd like to turn it off, move the side slider on the left hand side all the way to the bottom. However, as you can see, this is not recommended. So if you feel that the pop up is annoyance, you can certainly turn it off. Once you scroll down, go ahead and select OK. And of course, you would get that pop up again. You may have not seen it in my recorded video, but that's how you turn it off. Let me go back here again, user account. And now when I click OK, it won't do anything. How to hide the taskbar in Windows 10. If you hover over your taskbar, you can go ahead and right click it and select the taskbar settings. Within here, we can select the option that says automatically hide the taskbar in tablet mode and also automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode. If we toggle this on, the taskbar hides. 
Same thing for in taskbar in tablet mode. How do we remove a program in Windows 10? On your left hand side, right next to the start button, click inside the search box and type in add or remove. The first thing that should come up on your very top of results should be add remove programs. You can either select it or simply hit enter. In this window, if we scroll down, you can see different list of programs that are installed on a computer. Let's go ahead and remove this program called Bubble Witch 3 Saga, which comes installed with Windows 10. Once you select it, it will expand a little bit and you will have an option to click uninstall as long as you have administrator privileges. If you select the advanced options button, you will get a little bit more details about the app, similar to your phone. We can reset data and such. But let's go back since we want to you know, uninstall it. Go ahead and click the back arrow. Scroll down again. Find your program. Select uninstall. And then uninstall once more. And there you have it. Your computer has now removed the selected program. How to restore desktop icons in Windows 10. On your left hand side, right next to the start button here, click inside the search box and type in theme. The first thing that will come up as a result will be themes and related settings. Go ahead and select that or simply hit enter. Once this box shows up, on the right hand side, we need to scroll down and look for a menu called Related Settings. Underneath it will be a link called Desktop Icon Settings, as so. Go ahead and select that. Here we can select the desktop icons that we want to appear. Personally, I like Computer, User Files, Network, Recycle Bin, and Control Panel. Go ahead and select Apply. Now you have your desktop icons. Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. Let's go ahead and rotate our screen. Uh, this you have to be logged into Windows to use this. On your keyboard, use Control, Alt, you have to hold them, and then arrow keys on your keyboard. So if we do Control, Alt, left arrow key, it's going to rotate to the left. If we do Control alt right arrow key, it's going to rotate our screen to the right. Okay, same thing if we do Control alt up it's going to basically bring it back to normal position. If we do Control alt down it's going to flip it upside down. And one thing to keep in mind, you can always do Control alt up to bring it back to your normal position in case you mess up. Here's a top view of this. So control alt left, right, up, or down. There you go. Have a good one. Bye-bye.